Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to an implicit differentiation follow-up. Now this is really cool, because I've noticed that a lot of people have been watching my original video on implicit differentiation, the very first video I've ever done on uh, maths before, and I figure, well yeah, it was okay, it introduced you to the concept, but the board, it really wasn't that easy to actually read, it's before I got this beautiful board here. But uh, now that I've got this nice board and I've sort of developed my mathematical understanding a bit more, I think it's time for a good follow-up, and I reckon that we'll go for a few different questions this time. With that being said, if you do want to watch the original video, it may help you a little bit, but I'll be going for implicit differentiation reasonably well covered, so you should be able to have a pretty good understanding of it by the end of this video. So this is, again, a follow-up because that was one of my most popular videos. In fact, uh, at the time I actually checked, it was almost on 30 views, so that's really cool. And uh, of course, if you have any comments, feel free to suggest what kind of things you need to be able to work on. Okay, so there's a few rules we use with implicit differentiation, and I'll keep this uh, video reasonably brief, but the D y over, uh, sorry, the y prime is going to be equal to dy over dx, and this is based on the chain rule, because when we use implicit differentiation, we differentiate with respect to the value x. So as you can see here, uh, in case you haven't got the idea of what implicit differentiation is all about, it means we have x's and y's on the same side of the equation, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to actually take those y's out and put them on the other side and actually isolate just y as a common factor generally because there'll be two y values within there somewhere, or y will be raised to some crazy power. Uh, but again, we just sort of treat it as another variable within there, because implicit just means x's and y's mingle on the same side of the equation, and uh, we won't bother about actually separating them out, we'll just differentiate them in there. So y prime dy over dx, and whenever we have a y value we need to differentiate, we're just going to add that on the end there, because it's giving respect to the mighty word x. Okay, so now what we can do is we can evaluate our first problem here. So x to the 4 plus xy plus y to the 3 equals 3. Okay, cool. So what we go, uh, what we do, sorry, well, not what we go, but what we do is we actually go through term by term and work out, okay, what's the derivative? And uh, from that we can work out dy over dx. Now in this video I won't be going into how we can actually use implicit differentiation to find the slope of the tangent. However, if you do want a video about that, just leave it in the comments. But uh, this is more about the art of just finding the first derivative rather than actually applying it to the slope of the tangent. Now, what we do is we differentiate x to the 4. Again, very straightforward. We bring that uh, exponent down to coefficient position, and we get the product of the coefficient and the exponent, and that's going to be 4, because 4 times 1 is 4. Who would have known? Then we have 4x, and we subtract 1 from that exponent. So we have 4x to the 3. Now we treat this next one as being a product rule. Why do we treat it as a product rule? Well, x and y are multiplied by each other. We have two different terms multiplied by each other, so we need to go through the product rule. Now, the derivative of x is just going to be 1, so I'm not even going to bother writing that, but uh, then we write the second term as is, so it's y, and we don't put a dy dx there because y is itself. When we actually differentiate y, which is what we do in the second half of the product rule, where we go, okay, derivative second term, then multiply by the first term as is, the opposite of what we were just doing, the converse, that's when we would actually give it a dy dx. So now we have x, and we take the derivative of y, and the derivative of y is dy dx. Now we have y to the power of 3. Okay? Not to worry, what we do is we just bring that exponent down to the front, so we have 3, and y, and we uh, actually subtract 1 from the exponent. So it's 3y squared times by dy dx, because of course we just differentiated a y term, and we need to give respect to x. And all of that, I'm going to put it on this side, because I kind of ran out of space on that side, but all of that equals zero, because the derivative of a constant is always zero. So now what we do is we gather our dy dx terms, and we leave them on one side of the equation, but we move the other terms to the other side of the equation. 
this is positive 4x to the 3, it's going to be negative 4x to the 3, because I'm moving it to the left-hand side, because I want to get all the dy dx terms in on one side. Mm. It's easier just to keep them on the side they're already on, you know? And then what we do is we uh, subtract y as well, because we have positive y there, move it to the other side, it inverses the operation, and we're going to get take y. Then we have dy dx isolated as a common factor, and we have x plus 3y squared, because that's what's left over when we take those dy dx's out of those terms. And now what we do is we simply bring this, because it's in the numerator on this side, to denominator on that side. 4x to the 3, take y, and all over x plus 3y squared, and that's our derivative, our dy over dx. Pretty simple stuff when you get the hang of it. Just remember those y's, if they differentiate, they need to give respect to x. But, pretty simple, just apply those rules of differentiation, you know. You know the product rule by now, surely you do. Remember, you take the first term derivative, then you have the second term as is, and then you add it on to the actual um, first term as is, and the second term differentiated. So hopefully that's not too confusing, and uh, hopefully I'm not taking up too much time, so we can go on to the next one. And the next one is quite straightforward. So we've done that one. It's again very similar to what I just did, but we have, you know, a few different terms there. Again, the art of being able to implicitly differentiate is to practice. So we differentiate the first term, we bring that 2 down, and it's 2x to the power of 1. Don't need to write the power of 1 there. Plus y. So that's plus dy dx, because again, we're differentiating every term. And if we differentiate a y term, just slap a dy dx in there, it's really that simple. And now, the product rule term that we came across before. This is going to be the same as xy, because when you multiply things, it doesn't change the order. Think of 2 times 3, and then think of 3 times 2. Both of them are 6, if you've done it correctly. So, last time we ended up with y, because we differentiate x and got 1, and then we just write y as it is, and then it was x times dy over dx, because it was the first term. I know I've sort of done it back to front here for this example, but I'm sort of linking it back to the other one. If I were to do it just for this example here, then it would actually be dy dx times x plus y. Hopefully you understand that there. If you don't, write it in the comments and I'll answer it separately. <laughs> and then we differentiate the constant so it's zero. And now what we do is we actually need to be careful of something here. This dy dx is not just a dy dx on its own, it's actually multiplied by 1. Be very careful of that, because it's so tempting just to leave it out when you're actually filling in the rest of the equation and you've put dy dx out the front as a common factor. But uh, what we can do now is we can actually take the y and the 2x to the other side of the equation, and we can isolate dy dx as a common factor. So I'll do that. Uh, so we've got 1 plus x. Again, just took them out of the equation. Isolate them as a common factor, and just put in the things that they are multiplied by into the bracket there. Then we inverse these two that don't have dy dx terms, because they're not lucky enough. And we get our derivative, because we move the numerator of this side into the denominator of that side. And it's as simple as that. We differentiate that term, uh, that whole implicit uh, relationship. So now, what we can do is we can do one last equation, hopefully, reasonably quickly, and this one is quite easy, and it also ties in those uh, rules that we've been learning over the last few weeks, which is regarding differentiation of e to the x. Although this is quite a basic example of implicit differentiation with e to the x, it still gives you an idea of uh, being able to differentiate some e terms. So we differentiate e to the x, and we get e to the x, because e to the x is its own derivative. Funny story. Okay, and then what we do is we differentiate the y term there, and we know y prime is going to be dy over dx, but it's going to be 1 times dy over dx. Think about it. We have y prime, it's 1 lot of y, technically, so we're going 1 multiplied 
by dy over dx because we're giving respect to x. And then we just differentiate this last term, so we bring the 3 out the front, and then we have y, and we got 2 because we subtract 1 from the exponent, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So we leave the dy dx term on this side, it's 1 dy over dx, and then we simply inverse the operations on the other side. And then what we do is we bring this term in the numerator on the left-hand side into the denominator on the right-hand side. So we get negative e to the x minus 3y squared, all over 1. Okay, wait, it's over 1. It's easy to simplify. May as well go ahead and do it. Because anything over 1 is itself. 5 over 1, 5. 6 over 1, 6. A million over 1, a million. Okay, so that's just a follow-up on implicit differentiation. Hopefully it's clearer. I've covered quite a lot of ground in this video, but um, again, if you just practice it, if you just think about it, just think about giving respect to the value x when you're differentiating, and you'll be able to grasp these concepts quite quickly, quite easily, and you'll have a really good understanding of uh, what it means. But again, uh, you just got to differentiate each term individually, and then you've got to try and isolate dy over dx as a common factor. So again, I've just had 1 here because it's 1 times dy over dx. It's 1 lot of dy over dx. It's so common for people just to go dy dx out the front, and there's nothing there. So I get my dy over dx straight away. That's not necessarily the case. I mean, in this case it is because that's 1. But uh, if you had 1 plus 2x, for example, then it wouldn't be itself, because maybe you had another 2x times dy over dx in here. So it's about being careful and just thinking, okay, am I differentiating it correctly? Am I giving respect to x? And it does take a bit of practice. It's probably one of the most abstract differentiation rules there are. Uh, probably more even abstract than the chain rule. But again, practice makes perfect. Think about it. Just follow these four steps and you'll be able to get there. Differentiate each term individually. Look for the dy over dx's in the equation and group them together. Just go slice, cut out the dy dx, and anything that was attached to dy over dx, you put it in brackets there. And of course, the third step after that, any other terms that don't have dy dx in them, they're not lucky enough. You push them to the other side of the equation, and you inverse their operation because of it. Simple algebra concept. And then you just move whatever's in the bracket here from the numerator on the left-hand side into the denominator on the right-hand side. And if this happens to be fractional, then you can just deal with a fraction there, and you can work out how to be able to get rid of that fraction. But uh, generally, you wouldn't get fractional results. So that's implicit differentiation in a nutshell. Again, hopefully it builds off what's in my first video. See my first video if you want. I think I've explained it with a more well-rounded discussion this time. But if you have any questions, because this is a difficult concept, please write them in the comments section on YouTube. I'll get back to them as quickly as I can. And uh, thank you very much for watching.